All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the drive through final week of the weight loss challenge. I got my work cut out for me this week. I had a great weekend, and I ate as much food as I possibly could eat. Okay, so yesterday or Friday, you learned that these are the situations that we use law of signs. Now, which of those situations was the ambiguous case? the ASS or the SSA. So this is our special difficult case. And what do we have to do during that situation? We have to test to see if there are one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. Does that make sense? So then what scenarios will be, we be using law of cosines? The other two. Well, we mean the other two. And how do you know there's only two? So let's brainstorm. Which ones do you not see there? Angle, angle, angle. I'm glad we started with that one, okay? Are we going to be able to solve a triangle based on knowing all of its angles? Why are we not? Uh, okay, not bad. We could get what type of triangles? We could get similar triangles. So we're never going to be able to solve a triangle completely using angle, angle, angle. Okay, so angle, angle, angle's out. What else? Side, side, side. Yes, that's going to be one of them, okay? So if we are given three sides, we should be able to completely solve a triangle, right? Should there be two different answers? No, because side, side, side was a way to do what? It was a way to prove triangles congruent. So if you're given three sides of a triangle, you know that it is only one triangle. It's congruent to every other triangle on Earth that has those three sides. What's another one that we haven't named? SAS. Those are your two situations. And we now have them all covered. Because remember, does the order matter? Yes, but does it matter whether it's forwards or backwards? It doesn't. So if you think about it, we've now covered every single combination of three letters, S and A. Got it? So this is when you're going to be using law of cosines, and that's certainly going to be what, something you want to write down on your card. When do I use law of sines? When do I use law of cosines? Okay? All right, so here you see that there are three law of cosines, but there really are not. Does that make sense to you? Do you see how closely related the first one is to the second one and so on? Okay, so that's all your notes. So let's look at task two, number A. We are given A... B and C, okay? We're trying to find A, B, and C, the angles. Now, what you'll be learning later on in our little notes is that one advantage that the law of cosines has is that it will produce you an obtuse angle, whereas the law of signs cannot. It will never produce you an obtuse angle, okay? So my suggestion would be if you're given, if you're ever given side, 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 always find the biggest angle first, okay? So which one's that going to be? It's going to be C. So somebody set this up for me, please. Which one are we going to pick? Excellent. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared uh, minus, right? Yeah. 2AB sine of capital C, correct? Did I get that right? Cosine. Duh. 
cosine. Thank you. It is the law of cosine day after all. All right, so look, just do work, okay? So you get 20 squared equals 15 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 15 times 12 times cosine of C. You guys are going to make all sort of mistakes algebraically here. Okay, what's 200 squared? Okay, and what's 225 plus 144? Oh, and that is 30 times 12. Okay. Rather than let you mess up, I'll tell you what we do next. But I think you guys would probably make a mistake here. Not all of you, but some of you. You get 31 is negative 360 cosine of C. Do you want to know what mistake many of you will make? You'll call this side 9 cosine of C. And that's wrong. You'll do 369 minus 360 cosine C. It's not how it works. That would be like saying 5 plus 2x is 7x. Mm -mm. That's not true. So what I'm telling you is you cannot combine this term with this term. They're not like terms. You know what I mean? So now we've got negative 360 cosine of C equals 31. Who do you think can tell, or who can tell me the next thing we're going to do? Excellent. So cosine of C is 31 over negative 360. How do I get rid of cosine? Cosine inverse of this, and what do I get for C? So cosine inverse 31 over negative 360 with a bunch of parentheses. Cool. All right, and we're, we were told to, uh, to round to the nearest degree, so 95 degrees. Okay. Any suggestions on the next step? Excellent. Now switch over to the law of signs. Why would we want to do all that? when we could just say sine of 95 is to what? 20 like got it? so you end up getting sine of A is 15 times the sine of 95 divided by 20 you do the sine inverse of that whole thing in parentheses. 48.3 for A. And so we'll call that 48 degrees because they told us to round. And then how are we going to find B? Subtract them from 180. 37. Does that answer make sense, Cole? Why? Excellent. Smallest angle, smallest side, biggest angle, biggest side. Okay? You feel better now? All right. Now let's look at B. We are given capital A. So this is an SAS scenario. We don't know this A. We don't know capital B. We don't know capital C. Okay, so I don't think we have a choice here. I think we've got to do A squared equals 14 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 14 times 22 times cosine of 40.
this is where I think it helps to have a graphing calculator because you can put all of that in your graphing calculator and visually see that you got it right. Where on your non-graphing calculator, you can't fit it all into your little window. Okay. So tell me, tell me what they get for that whole big old long right right side. If you're right, with the, if, you're, if you plug it in right, your calculator will give you the right answer. Six eighty minus six sixteen cosine of forty. Okay, now I'll go ahead and give me what that is. Okay, so now what do we do to find a square root four? Oh, you did. Sorry, thank you. So A is 14.4. OK. Does that make a triangle? Yes, it does, because these two add up to be bigger than the biggest one. So now what should we do? The law of sines. OK. So sine of 40 is to 14.4, like sine of B is to 14. Obviously, we're expecting to get something in the high 30s here. Sine of B is 14 times the sine of 40 divided by 14.4. Sine inverse of both sides, 38.7. So we'll call that 39. Okay, and that makes angle C 101. And does our answer make sense? Yeah. Indeed. Okay. All right. So task C is not. We're not going to do this one. There's nothing to do. We just have to answer a question. There's a chance you will do this entire process correctly and still not properly solve this triangle. That is because the law of sines will only give you an acute angle. Okay? However, the law of cosines will give you an acute or obtuse angle. So with that in mind, which angle should you find first in this problem? Which is what? Angle C. Got it? So now you are prepared to find the missing parts of any triangle that's ever given to you. And that's just kind of cool to me because that's how cell phones work. Did you know that? That's how the, that's how the man's always keeping track of you. All you need is three pieces of information, and they know everything about you. So what are those three pieces of information? Not where you live. What's that? Not your password. Not your name. All they need to know is where your cell phone is. What are the other two pieces of information that are known? The satellite and the tower. Those two things aren't moving. The satellite's moving, but the satellite knows where itself is. The tower doesn't move, and you move. And it's figuring out where you are by a permanent triangulation. It is figuring out the distance between the satellite and the tower, the distance between the tower and you, the distance between you and the satellite, and now it knows everything about you, location-wise, just by those three little coordinates. Okay? Boom!